So again, I'm John Anderson, product planner for Fluke Networks Air Magnet Wireless LAN Test Solutions. And uh, at this point, I want to provide a demonstration of our upcoming Survey Pro 8.7 release. As Dale mentioned earlier, last year, you recall, we added, uh, we came out with the first real-world 11AC survey using 11AC adapters. Now, with this release, we're completing the, the whole uh, solution, completing the whole life cycle by adding uh, 11AC to our uh, planning product. First thing, uh, however, before we get into the uh, planner for 11AC, I do want to uh, present the other major um, part of the 8.7 release, and that is an update to the UI. So we heard a lot of feedback that the UI was getting uh, a bit old and a little bit cumbersome. So we really uh, did some updates to it to make it look like a, a modern application. The workflow, the menu structures, all that's the same. So if you're familiar with how survey works, you'll have zero learning curve uh, picking up the new release. But we did add some conveniences. For example, all the display views, uh, we moved into a toolbar up here, uh, the tool, and then all the actions on each display view, like creating a new one, zooming in, seeing the overlap view, all these things, we moved into toolbars that are um, actually portable, just like any standard uh, Windows thing is. So you can move the toolbars around, you can customize them, all that stuff. Then, of course, the file menu moved over to the left. I uh, have the status down here at the bottom, so we really kind of updated the whole look and feel of it to look like a, a modern application. For multi-floor planner, we've added uh, 802.11ac capabilities. So a number of things we um, put into this product is the ability to add uh, 11ac access points and properties, uh, the different heat maps, including adjusting uh, heat maps such as phi data rate and throughput to reflect new 11ac parameters, uh, adding it to the reports. So, and we also added a uh, demo, 11ac demo sample project to the release that you can play with as soon as you get it. So to start off with, um, uh, let me zoom here. Is this an either or, or is it still two different applications? Uh, the multi-floor planner yeah. and the legacy planner, yes. This is still the uh, multi-floor planner which launches on the, the separate screen. So for example, on a uh, access point, um, we added the ability to specify 11AC properties. So if you go to the 5 gig tab, uh, down here in the media type, we added 11AC. And then you can configure your um, uh, access point with 11AC properties, so the multiple spatial streams, the new 11AC, MCS, and the C, 0 through 9. Um, the maximum frame size now goes all the way up if this really affects, for example, your throughput heat map, all the way up to uh, over a, uh, a million bytes, uh, and your channel width. Now this is primarily around the Wave 1 deployments of 11AC, but we did add 160 megahertz channels to uh, the planning product so that uh, customers can do forward-looking planning. So if you're deploying, uh, planning out a new network today, you know that in a year or two you're going to swap out your APs for the new ones with 160 megahertz channels for you know, whatever reason. Uh, you can do what-if scenarios and see how, for example, your five data rate coverage and stuff like that are going to be affected. On the heat map side, we still have all the same heat maps for planning, signal strength, channel interference. Our predictified data rate, uh, you'll see that now, now goes up to, with the 80 megahertz channel, now goes up to 1300 megabytes per second. I go in here and I select a 160 megahertz channel, for example. Let's see what happens. Okay, now my phi data rate, the maximum will double up to 2,600 megabits per second to account for that. We added a new heat map for the 11AC MCS indices, what, uh, what the coverage level of the highest available MCS index would be. 
Um, and our channel overlap, a new heat map that we added uh, last year to our survey product showing uh, the impact and performance that uh, primary and secondary overlaps would introduce, we added as a planning heat map. And of course, our operating mode heat map for V8, we added VHT, our channel width heat map now will show coverage of 80 megahertz channels and if you want to try it out, the 160 megahertz channel widths as well. And as before, the great things about uh, some of the great views you can do in this product, for example, uh, you can go to this multi-view and see what the uh, bleed over effect to other um, floors would be of your access points. So for example, I can go to this multiple view showing me all four, four floors of my building. I can go down here and show me my heat map generated for access points on floor three. And then I can uh, see how that, this is floor three here, I can see my coverage for those and then see how the signal levels or those would bleed over to the floor above it, floor four, and the floor below it, floor two. <clears throat> And I can see this in a 3D view as well. If I want to see bleed over for, from a specific access point, I can go over here and select that specific access point. And that will actually show me, uh, I get this little red vertical line locating where that access point is and I can easily see where that bleeds over on the floor above it and floor below it. One thing, uh, another thing that we added here is, uh, as a convenience is we realized that uh, having to update um, all these access points one at a time was kind of uh, was a bit cumbersome. So we had the uh, ability to, in our view, access point, let's see, where did that go? Oh, wait a second. Oh, that's it. And maybe you just skip it. Okay. Yeah. I was looking for the. Uh... Oh, there it is. You have to select a single floor. So you can view all the access points as a list on a single floor. And we added this group change. So now if you want to go through here, for example, and change a channel width for them all at once without having to do it, uh, without having to do them one at a time, you can just click this group change list, go through there and select which ones you want to change and change the properties for it. And of course we have the report on here, all the new heat maps, access, love and AC, AP properties, everything that we've added here is also now in the new reports. Is there airwise on the multi-floor planner? Um, not yet, but we do have, I mean, we do have the uh, concept of the sliding toolbar. So if you can set your signal level threshold, for example, and slide your toolbar and be able to visualize where that coverage is met. And I was just thinking met. of like the Cisco voice requirements, what percentage met the requirement kind of thing. Yeah, now you can import, you can import the uh, multi-floor planner plan into survey and then run that on it. Because then so, it's saved as a virtual survey and then you run yeah. that okay. data set off Airwise. Yeah, yeah, so it is, you just import it into as a virtual survey. You can even merge it with real surveys if you want. Run it through the Airwise engine and see all that. Like is there a diff view too. any plan to integrate the two applications into one? It is actually yeah. integrated, right? It's well, just a separate of, EXC. Instead of the multi-floor planner kind of being its own pop-out and doing its own thing, maybe having that built into the planner that's already in. Yeah, so in, yeah, the, we'll, in the future, we have those plans. Okay. Right now, it's a separate EXE, but you launch it from within the application. Right. Yeah. Yes. There are a number of other features, enhancements that we're adding to uh, 8.7. Um, it'll be in the release notes. For example, we're updating our, our AutoCAD support and a number of other. These are the, uh, the, the big ones here. Yes. I was always curious, how do you guys actually test this? I mean, do you do a survey with an AP on a stick and kind of measure, you know, the, the attenuation at walls, you kind of do your predictive and then see if it matches up. I mean, can you talk on that? I mean, because right now this is voodoo us. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. you kind of plug in some numbers and see what you get. Mm -hmm. right? I mean, how, how are you qualifying or, or, or quality testing this? 
Well, we, yeah, we do do a number. Are you talking about the survey as a whole or just specific planning? Predictive. Plan? So, yeah, the predictive, predictive as a whole. Predictive as a whole. Yeah. Um, so I think as part of the whole exercise, right, what we do is just like you rightly said, right, we place an access point, right, obviously based, we know which access point it is, we know what antenna is used, right, then we try to replicate the same access point as well as uh, replicate these construction materials, right? Obviously, we can stand on both sides of the walls, right, using a survey and say, oh, the actual attenuation of this wall is 17 dB, even though this is a concrete wall and the default option may be 13 dB or 15 dB, right? As part of a test, we say, this wall is 17 dB, let's create uh, an accurate building and environmental construction and then place the access point, take real world measurements, compare it, we obviously have the diff view built inside uh, in terms of the results versus the predictive stuff as well as the real world stuff. So, and that differences, some of it could influence how we tune the algorithm or whatever that's needed. Is there one that's way how we test it. Is there one way or another that's better of creating the RF obstacles? Because I know using the little mesh filled polygons is super easy, but I don't know if that's accurate because if there's walls within that rectangle, uh -huh. should those be drawn out individually or because you can't overlay I think if those. there are, yes, you have yeah. to do it individually if there are subsections within so that, that big be random section. One open yes. room. Yeah, the, zone, the zones are uh, convenient, but they're actually fairly accurate. I mean, they fit the, the attenuation you see across the zone at a, if you make it the same width as a, an object, you'll get about the same, but uh, same attenuation. But what is the attenuation in dB per meter? What's, what's how... The little weird number is just the number. We, what does 40 mean? <laughs> we've actually updated the UI to, to, cur to basically make that more clear. Yeah, it, it's dB per meter or per foot. So you calibrate your, your units as feet or meters, and then it will show you dB per feet or dB per meters. And if you say this is four feet, it will calculate that and actually show you what the total dB is. So we've, we noticed it's that and we've updated on the one. UI on that one. So what I was kind of questioning is, is if you, since you can't draw the, um, the, the zones so that they overlap, I didn't know if I was drawing a zone and another zone. Does that mean I'm defining two separate walls when there's really just one wall? So I was kind of like, I don't know, should I just, dr just draw the lines because then there's just a single RF obstacle? And, and you know what I mean? Like the, the perimeter of the zone, is that, that, is that also considered? an RF obstacle with a dB loss, so if I butt two of them together, does that add? I think it takes the perimeter as well into consideration as the dB loss, right? Um, well, I yeah, I'll take putting the, two yeah. perimeters next to one another, is that doubling the dB loss there at the perimeter rather than just a single wall that's drawn? I think it'll Oh, double. if you overlay one? Or if you, because you can't overlay them, so if you butt you them up together, them. Is, that, is that technically two yeah. walls? Yes, it'll, it'll, it'll add them. Okay. okay. Interesting. Note as well um, at Danaher in the comms group, we just acquired Newfield Wireless in Berkeley. Um, they are experts at supplying propagation models for wireless. Now they haven't entered um, the Wi Fi space, but we're in discussion that in the future we might be able to advance our. Uh, modeling effort of the propagation of Wi-Fi AP signals uh, in this specific area for uh, greater accuracy. So uh, y you could, if you were to go on Newfield's space, you kind of understand what they do. And uh, we're just in the early days. This was late, late, late last year. Just in the early days of com talking about how to uh, change modeling efforts there. I've got a question right. in terms of multi-floor planning. How do you take into account the e-plane of the AP? Because I mean, most of most time we're doing designs, we're designing them with you know an AP in a, you know the appropriate orientation, and there's another antenna pattern for the, the elevation plane between the floors. How, can you guys explain kind of how you take that into account? Yeah, it's more of a, a static value for because as you know we have the azimuth orientation, the elevation, but that's determining it in the the horizontal direction depending on. If you hang it on the wall or on the shelf, and then we uh, use more static values for determining how it's going to, based on what, what height you're putting the AP at, which you specify, and then the space between your floors, and you can also specify, again, the, the dB loss between floors. 
looking where that AP rises, how, many, how much dB of attenuation material you have to your next floor, and then uh, using an assumed value of the propagation in that direction.